Welcome to my fourth mayor's message on April 30th, 2020. And as of yesterday, our counting COVID cases is 154, 99 in Dallas County and 55 in Tarrant County. Three deaths in Dallas County, one death in Tarrant County. You can track all this information at gptx.org. In addition, you can call our hotline at 972-237-4465. Let's kick it off by starting with what Governor Abbott did Monday afternoon. He opened us back up for business. Now, I, it's really irrelevant whether you think it's too soon or too late. It's an executive order. His orders take precedence over local orders. And so this is what we're gonna be going by. He's allowing restaurants, businesses, theaters, and others to open tomorrow at a 25% capacity. Now, his orders don't require you to open, and many restaurants and most theaters have, are choosing not to open, but they can open if they choose. You still have to practice social distancing and wear a mask. There will not be fines for wear, not wearing a mask, but we highly, and the governor highly recommends that you continue to use social distancing and wear a mask when you're out in public. Now, as I said, many restaurants and most all the theaters have chosen not to at this time, and they may later. Let's look at the next step. The governor said if we don't have a spike, he may open up more of the state on the 18th of May, go up to 50% capacity. Now, there are things that cannot open, swimming pools, barber shops, hair salons, tattoo parlors, gyms. You can find all the list in his orders, but that's just kind of a brief summary of them. We need to remain vigilant. Again, whether you think these are correct or incorrect and whether we should be opening or not, we all need to practice social distancing and take care of ourselves or we'll never get to open up more. I want the state of Texas, Grand Prairie, and our local economy to be able to open. So let's give the governor every reason to open us up more on May 18th by following the rules and let's see those numbers not spike. Let's go over the guidelines that we need to follow for health. Stay home if you can, wear face coverings in public, wash hands often and for 20 seconds, or use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol, cover coughs and sneezes with a tissue, then throw the tissue away. This one's a tough one for me. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Disinfect surfaces, buttons, handles, doorknobs, light switches, and other places touched often. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Continue to practice social distancing, avoid crowds, and please, if you're sick, stay home. Let's take a look at the number of new cases in both Dallas County and Tarrant County on a day-by-day -day basis, in addition to a seven-day rolling average. In Dallas County, you can see we were doing pretty good April 20 through 25th. Then we had a spike April 26 through the 28th, causing the seven-day trend to move up again. Then you look at Tarrant County. We saw a real uptick daily April 21 through 26. Then it has been better since April 27. But still, the seven-day rolling average is on a rise. I can tell you this, the percentage of population that have COVID-19 in Grand Prairie is one of the lowest in the cities around us. Even though the governor is allowing retail and restaurants to open up at 25% capacity, and we as a government agency could have remained open except for libraries, we are choosing not to open at this time, even our libraries. We'll stu still do the curbside pickup for libraries. Our airport, however, is opening, and the cafe there at the airport, Radio Cafe, will be open at a 25% capacity, and you need to wear a mask. Let's just talk about wearing masks for a minute. I get a lot of complaints about businesses requiring you to wear a mask to get in their establishment, and you say, well, wait, I, they can't get fined. It's not a law. <laughs> Folks, any private business can require anything, kind of like no shirts, no shoes, no service. It can be no mask. You can't get in. Just follow the rules of that local establishment. Okay, let's talk about three of our parks. The dog park is still closed. Lloyd Park, open enclosed RVs only, no day use. However, we're going to let 25 cars with boats or trucks in with boats in to use the uh, boat ramp there, just limited to 25. Let's go to what we're doing at Lynn Creek Park. Effective May 1st, from Thursday through Sunday, we will be open and allow the first 100 cars in. 
when a car leaves, another one could go in. But we're limiting it to 100 cars. Now, we, in addition to that, we're allowing 50 boats to go into our dock. So a truck or a car pulling a boat in, that's in addition to the 100. So another 50 can get in if they're using the boat ramp. And again, when someone leaves with a boat, we'll let another one go in. If you leave, though, you may not be able to get in. Depends on how long the line is. So we're just trying that out. The first 100 cars, limiting to 100 cars, two leave, two go in, 50 boats. One leaves, another one goes in. Here are some additional rules for Lynn Creek Park use. You must wear a face covering when entering the park. The swim beach is closed. Picnic sites are available on a first come, first serve basis only. No more than two vehicles and five people per site. Remember to practice social distancing of at least six feet unless you're from the same household. You know, there's been a lot of weddings planned and people have had to change their plans. It's terrible. Graduations off, uh, prom, weddings. It's just been tough on everybody. The Ruthie Jackson Center is offering free weddings in our garden in two hour increments, but you still have to maintain social distancing and limit the size. You can contact the Ruthie Jackson Center for more information. Let's talk about some food distribution points in our city. First, all three of our recreation centers starting May 6th distribute food from 9 a.m. to noon. That's a box of food. All you have to do is bring some identification that you're from Grand Prairie and live in Grand Prairie. There's no limit on income or you don't have to show proof or anything except that you live in Grand Prairie. The Hispanic Heritage Ambassadors DFW Food Pantry distributes on the third Wednesday of every month from 9 to noon at the Pioneer Event Center located at 1025 West Pioneer Parkway. On Friday, May 1st from 9 a.m. to noon, the North Texas Food Bank will distribute food while supply lasts at Lone Star Park, 1000 Lone Star Parkway. The Grand Prairie YMCA 4556 South Carrier Parkway is offering weekly food assistance on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1030 to 1 p.m. Grand Prairie United Charities at 1417 Densman Street provide food assistance Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Food assistance is provided once every 30 days to Grand Prairie residents living in Tarrant and Dallas counties. Now let's listen to Councilmember Del Boski and Councilmember Lopez for a few well wishes. Hello, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, my name is Mike Delbowski. I'm the City Council Member for District 3. It is the central east side of Grand Prairie. But I want to just take just a minute or two of your time and for one, just to say thanks. Thanks for being there. Thanks for being together. Thanks for, for helping out as a family of coming back. You know, this whole pandemic that has started, it has brought us back as a community to the basics. Uh, first off and foremost to our first responders, uh, to our, all of our medical. I know that in Grand Prairie, we're limited of medical. We don't even have a hospital, but even those, the hospitals that are surrounding Grand Prairie, how they're here for us. Second, to all the teachers that are out there in administrative. GP, ISD, uh, men and women, uh, uh, teachers, the admin, y'all have gone up, up, above and beyond. And I think now with the people that I speak with and everyone out there in the community, they truly have a new respect for y'all and for the administrative and teachers because everything that y'all are putting in, when y'all have a classroom of 15 or 20, that's one thing, but when you're at home and that mother or father has that one kid and they're having a hard time because at times they're testing their own intelligence. But it's a beautiful thing that unfortunately this pandemic that has come before us, the beautiful thing is that what is put in us as far as giving back, uh, being there together as a family, as a community. Thank you for everything that you are doing. Keep it up, take it to the next level, help your fellow neighbor out, help everyone that you can, pay it forward, and believe me, God will give you blessings. Hello, hola, my name is John Lopez. I represent you on the Grand Prix City Council for District 4. I wanna first start off and say thank you. Thank you for the important part you're playing in our city. By you staying home, following the rules within your county, it helps us out as a whole city. We know it's very different in today's life. We're working from home. We're having to help our children with school. We're also learning what the new requirements are around us. But each of us play an important role in this process. And I think by us doing our part, we'll move ahead. 
In addition, I want to make sure that our first responders understand that we're very happy that you're a part of this process. Not only our first responders, but our whole city staff, are from all the way from code enforcement, public works, technical IT department, y'all did an awesome job, really appreciate it. In addition to that, I want to make sure that our teachers get recognized as well. You're learning how to teach remotely, having the patience with our parents, and still continue teaching our children. For the class of 2020, congratulations. When you started the school year, you were a senior. Never thought it would end up in this way, but you're doing everything possible to make sure that you reach your diploma, and we just look forward to see what great things you have forward for us. Also want to thank all the frontline workers from grocery stores, you know, our nurses, our doctors, very important for y'all to play in this part. All right, neighbors, as a reminder, I also want to say that we got to October 31st to do our census. We have to do our part. I know we're at home, but now it's a great opportunity for us to do, play a part role for the next 10 years. It's gonna benefit our schools, the money we get for healthcare, the money we get as a city to help future businesses. And that plays an important role, especially now when we have a lot of local businesses that are hanging by a string. So do your part, do the census, and let's make sure we get it counted. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you soon. Council Member Swalford and his wife Judy are doing well, but they're staying home. This is from him. Judy and I have been sheltering at home and are looking forward to being able to get back out again soon. We encourage everyone to shop and eat locally if you can. I hope you and yours are safe and healthy. Look folks, we're gonna get through this together. And why do I say together? Because it takes all of us working together to keep control of this. We need to follow social distancing, wear a mask. We need to give Governor Abbott every reason to open up more May 18th. Let's give him the data he needs to be able to open up more of Texas. Be safe. What's the number on that, two? Two. two. Grand Prairie is helping families struggling because of the COVID-19 pandemic. On Friday, the city hosted a drive through food pantry sponsored by the North Texas Food Bank. National Guard troops loaded boxes of dry goods and fresh produce into vehicles at the Lone Star Park racetrack. Officials say an unprecedented number of families need help with food and other necessities because of the economic downturn caused by the outbreak. You know, the needs have skyrocketed since COVID hit. We have so many people in our community that are out of work and out of jobs, and uh, they just really don't know what to do. And for the first time, many of these people now have to have food assistance. It is reaching out to those in need, and that is um, what Grand Prairie does best. Grand Prairie has a heart for people, and uh, this shows it, this displays it right here in our city. By the end of Friday's drive through more than 4,600 food boxes have been given away to nearly 1,000 households. And similar events are planned while the need continues. Many of the boxes that they're receiving now will sustain uh, clients up to a week, a week and a half, depending on how many boxes and, and the household size. So our hope moving forward with our partnership with the food bank is to do this every two weeks. In the meantime, the city is offering food giveaways at three recreation centers each Wednesday in May. Families can also receive food supplies four days a week through Grand Prairie United Charities. There is no financial need or income status required for the assistance, but residents must bring identification with proof of a Grand Prairie address. Grand Prairie now offers contact-free curbside checkout at two of its public library locations, the Betty Warmack Library on the city's south side and GP's main library. It's a simple process that starts as soon as you log on to gptx.org library. You go online, you place your request, we'll send you an email or text notification that your items are ready, you drive to the library that you chose to pick up your items from, and give us a call. And we'll ask you to stay on hold while we get your items ready. When we come back on the line, we'll tell you your items are outside and ready for you to pick up. They'll be in a green bag with your name on it. You pick it up and you're all set to go. The new service has proven to be an instant hit. So much so that library staff has added more hours and another day to accommodate customers. 
When we started, it was Monday through Friday, 2 to 6, and the demand has been popular enough that we've expanded it to the new hours, which are 12 to 6, Monday through Friday, and we added Saturdays, which are 11 to 2. If you have any questions about No Contact Checkout or any of the services now being offered at the library, log on to their website, call them, or contact them via email at gplibrary at gptx.org.